Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today, we're continuing to look at these lovely 75% that keep being released by companies that we've known for a while. And we trust because they put out good products and they stand behind their products. Today, we're taking a look at the XBX K75 Pro. Now, I, I should address it because I know a lot of people haven't or have been confused by it. XVX and Warmir were a combined company at one point, but in the last few months they have split and now XVX is one company and Warmir is another. So just so that you know. Now XVX, they do have a profile keycaps. They name XVX, which are, I guess you could call them low profile cherries. They're very low to the ground. They're actually quite nice. I like them. I have a couple of sets on keyboards as their standard size keyboards, but with those keys, it really does bring the typing angle a little bit lower. Anyway, this is their entry into what is the current, I guess, craze. I don't know if that's the right word, but there's definitely a big push for aluminum 75% keyboards at or near $100 that had that high fine out of the box perfect pitch or that just well tuned sound. I don't want to call it clacky or thocky or creamy or marbly. I think hi fi is what really works because it kind of hits all the different notes. It hits a little bit of deep, it hits a little bit in the middle, it hits a little bit high. It's a little bit like a tap dance, it's a little bit like glass, it's a little bit like marble. Um, but it's basically how for those of us that have been in the hobby for some time, it's kind of one of those sound profiles that I think a lot of us tried to reach for. Some of us probably did get or at least come close to in the modifications that we did. So now these keyboards are coming, sounding this way out of the box. And not only that, at an extremely great price. So the value proposition has just gotten so much better. There truly just is no need for group buys and waiting a year or two to get your product when you can get these great products that are made well. They've taken lessons from all the mistakes that previous designers and keyboard manufacturers have made and they're bringing us the best of the best and they're doing it in a way that you know practically every other product and every other market works like as an in-stock product. You pick the one that you want you know you have usually a, a little bit of customization like what color you want, what switch you want, keycap, so on. But I mean as always we can always pull the switches off, pull the keycaps off, and make it our own. Heck, we can even do a different finish on the aluminum, like do a Cerakoting um, instead of an Electroforce. But it has really become a renaissance of aluminum keyboards and the availability and the choices and the options that we have now available at really affordable prices. And I, for one, am all for it. Like I said, today we're taking a look at the K75 Pro, which is their entry on it. Now, let's see if we have any more information on here. Uh, it's K75 Pro Gaming Keyboard. It is blue. I believe it has linear switches. And that's about all the box will tell us. So let's just go ahead and dive on in and see what we've got. All right, before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have in the box. We have a pretty decent user manual here. Um, pretty good stock paper. Gives us the indicators. We have a port. Looks like we have some switches on the back. Um, and this one does have a screen. So this is an aluminum with a screen. Nice. So this is going to be a lot like, except for the fact that it uses close source software, it's going to be a lot like, say, a Zoom 75 with a um, with screen. Though, this is an in-stock product, not a pre-order, not a group buy. Well, we also have a user card that tells us what we have in the box, um, list of what to expect, and then some basic instructions for the combination of keys. Obviously, the user manual is going to be a little bit more complete as to those functions. So we do have some extra keys. If we want to change the colors 
of a couple of the modifiers like enter and super as well as the space bar that's always appreciated we do have the usb 2.4 gigahertz receiver it would be nice if they included a logo on there we have a nice nylon usb a to usb c cable and we have your standard keycap and key switch puller so no extra switches so we got some extra keys but we didn't get any extra switches a couple of extra switches is always appreciated so here we are with our, our unwrapped k75 pro and i gotta say this is actually really nice um i'm actually digging the two tones it does have a logo but it's very subdued um and it's just kind of it's probably silk screened onto there so it could probably come off but i don't I don't see a need to put the effort into it to, to come off because I think it's just fine right there. Um, it is a bit of a lighter aluminum and it's not light at all. It's just you can tell that it's not quite as thick. Um, again, I've brought this before, especially with the wireless one, the wireless keyboards. When it's aluminum, you kind of still want to have that. You want. You know, you still want a solid keyboard that's not going to slide around all over the place, but it's going to be something that you're very likely going to put into your bag, your backpack, and carry it with you. So you still want it to be something that is is manageable if you're going to be moving around. And I think that that they kind of meet that here. So we do have the angle. We do have an angle on the screen, which I truly appreciate one of the things that i've noticed with a lot of keyboards that have screens they're basically aiming straight up i mean if you have the feet up maybe they're tilted a little closer to you but for the most part they're flat on the keyboard surface so it actually is going up and because they're you know smaller screens they don't necessarily have good angle you know good good viewing angles so you know it's usually straight on or that's it you're just going to get you know glare or a blur this, this screen is actually lifted at a good enough angle that I'm going to be able to see it and it's going to come at me. It's not going to glare. Looking at the keycaps, I like them. I believe I've seen these before. Well, I mean, or at least some that were very similar to these. These, yep, they are double shot. Um, and I'm almost positive they're PBT, but I'll confirm during the spec section. And they are... Wow, they're 1.6 millimeters in thickness. Now that is definitely a good width for a keycap. That's probably one of the um, the thicker of the keycaps of these pre-built ones that I've seen so far. Now let's take a look at the switch that we have in here. It's actually an XVX branded switch. It's a linear, it's a long pole. I would guess probably 33.8 millimeters of travel. I would guess it to be pre-lubed, has no ping, it has a wing latch top, and it has a nice pleasant bottom out with five pins and a weight of, I would guess, 45 to 50 grams. So it's closer to somewhere between a red and a yellow and as far as weight goes, but it's popping. And here we are, of course, we have the hi-fi layers the IXPE sheet above the PET layer that's right on top of the PCB with, again, some poron below and probably another PET layer uh, below as well. Taking a look at the stabilizers, it looks like we have some of those newer Palm stabilizers. Checking for their tolerances on the plate. We have, they, they are, they wiggle as if they, as though they are a part of the plate. So they are basically um, very well matched in tolerances to the plate. So we shouldn't have too much of an issue if we don't have the ability, and it looks like we do not have the ability for uh, PCB mounted stabilizers. I don't think so. I will come back to all of these at uh, some point after I've completed the video, I'm doing a comparison of all these different aluminum 75% keyboards. And um, once I've done that, then I can go in and dive in and see what kind of 
crazy wacky mods I can get doing to these. But let's see, these appear to be well lubricated, not overly lubricated, just enough. Just enough, right? And on the elbow as well. If there's too much lubrication, that lubrication can attract dust and whatever else is in the air and basically turn it into a mud that will make stabilizers sluggish and sticky. So, but these plate mounted stabilizers are some of the best, better ones that I've seen because they are basically a part of the plate. And that's confirmed with the way this keyboard sounds. Don't get me wrong, this keyboard sounds amazing stock. I just, I like modding them. Now I can, I know I can mod it and change how this keyboard sounds, but I mean, when you're kind of modding up against what this sounds like stock, it's just kind of like, <laughs> because the, these keyboards are just, they're coming with a point that, I mean, don't get me wrong, modding will still change how the keyboard sounds and you can probably make some effect to how it feels as well. But when they sound so good stock, it's like, what if I make it sound worse? <laughs> I mean, with older keyboards, the concern was, you know, breaking it, not making it sound worse because any little thing you did usually made an improvement. But these sound so good, it's like, I don't want to make it sound worse. <laughs> All right, let's plug it in and see what it looks like. Got it on Windows. It's off. So will it come up? Yeah, there we go. We've got the XVX logo there. All right. So that's how we can go through the screen. And then we can go to the animation. All right. Up and down, basically. We can go to the connect. We can select the facts. We can select color, the speed, we can select volume. So it already has built-in animation and you can scroll through the, um, the different screens. So you can put in an animation, but you can control through the screen, the volume of your computer, um, the effects, the colors, single colors, um, as well as the language. So I will take a look at the software here after I do the, uh, technical specifications but we've got some pretty bright rgbs here so you got to actually select usb to get into usb mode when 84 percent i don't know if it has a clock or not i do hope that it does and if it doesn't i'm going to see if they plan to do it in a upgrade having a clock for me is big i mean having the battery obviously battery uh, capacity and what where it's at how far it's charged that's good um, but instead of the uh, I mean I'd prefer the XVX logo the using the bottom instead of the owl personally and then you'd have the room for having a clock a date and a clock uh, which would be just very cool in my opinion anyway um, this is a lovely 75% like I said it's a it's a bit lighter um, I do wish that it had, I mean, they, they were able to make this panel, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there is a thin plastic cover there to protect it, so it has a nice mirror finish, 
but I believe that they could have just extended it a little bit more on both sides and made for a pocket for the 2.4 dongle. Um, that said, I've seen a lot of uh, um, very cool 3D prints implementations where they use strong magnets like uh, like these, like the neo neodymium neodymium yeah blah, 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 neodymium neodymium magnets that are quite strong to where they um, basically attach it to the back of the keyboard. Now it can still come off that way, but um, I mean, and there's other little fixes, but it's, it shouldn't be left up to the consumer to, you know, worry about losing it. And, and also being that it doesn't have the logo, if it had the logo on it, eh, you know, okay, they can carry it in their pocket, you know, or the pocket of their backpack. But if you have a few of these, I know, I mean, I know I do. <laughs> so um, as much as I'd love for my laptop to have everything conveniently already connected, I I carry a USB hub with a, with two or three dongles connected at any one time for the different devices that I use uh, with my uh, laptop. So it's just, um, and, and all the other ones have the logo. I know exactly what they are, but I'm getting into the weeds there. Uh, this one, it has a nice layout. I actually like it that it has it's a compact 75%, but with blockers. So it's a little bit of a different layout because usually you're going to have your function rows have, you know, usually a one U space between them, um, or everything's just going to be compressed together and you'd get a couple extra keys up here, but you've got the 75%, you've got the full function row, you've got the keys that I need as long as I can bind underneath delete to a function which we'll find out here in a second with the software then i have everything that i need in order to do work but we have a decent set of um keycaps uh the legends aren't 100 percent, but it's just i'm more of a stickler for using the same caps whether it's you know full caps or uh, you know lowercase caps but using the same instead of writing it out like a sentence because it's not like the beginning of a sentence. And that's just a me thing. So that's just me being nitpicky. But the fact that they are so much thicker than standard keycaps, that's part of the reason why this sounds, this sounds high five, but it's actually a little bit on the deeper end. So this is going to be a little bit more of a thonky sound out of the box, even though I, I hate to say it because they all sound high five, but this one actually has more of a um, the tone for this one is a little bit deeper. It's similar than the other ones with high five, but the tone is a little bit deeper. And I think part of that is due to the thickness of the keycaps. Um, the construction probably helps there. But I mean, this one would be the one if like you want it. Like, I want a high five, but I want it deep high five this one i think that probably with a i'm going to say a tempest tape mod and probably switching out and putting something a little bit different for dampener below the pcb um and maybe taking out i mean leaving the the hi-fi layers above the pcb but taking out um whatever's between the plate the pcb might actually take the volume up but also deepen it with that difference in um in filler as well as using the tempest tape mod as a low pass filter i think it would i think it would bring a really nice deep tone to this keyboard again gonna have to wait because i gotta compare all of these head to head side by side stock so we can basically rate them and see you know how they all bear out against each other head to head because they all in one way or the other, bring something different or better or just something, you know, that doesn't quite compare to the rest. And I mean, they're all, I, I, I got to say, they're all doing their best to really stand out and really deliver a, they're really aiming and they're hitting pretty much the target on delivering keyboards that people want at a reasonable price. And I've just, 
I, I, I've been saying it for a little while. I know some people that have watched me since, you know, I first really got started. I'm like, watch, it's going to get better. They're going to start coming out with more keyboards that are running, you know, QMK or VIA, even if it's a closed source VIA. And they're going to start coming out with keyboards that you would have only seen in group buys. And they're going to be in stock products. And sure enough, here we are. So um, might have taken a little longer. I thought it was going to happen a little sooner, but it is happening. And what we've been seeing since basically probably about the end of last year of 2023 is some amazing keyboards that are being released um, from companies. I mean, smaller companies, but we've all seen them around for years because they've been there for years. And the companies that have stuck with me when I'm honest about the products and they still they're still like, no, we appreciate your honesty, you know please continue to review our products and they actually take and learn from that i've got to say that that to me is pretty huge i know that i mean i'm not <laughs> going to change the world reviewing keyboards or anything but it's nice that i can pass on you know not only my opinion but opinions feed from feedback that i receive from the videos that i make and actually help to improve the products that in the end you know we get to buy you know, so we're kind of, it's, it, it, to me, it's a, it's almost like a positive feedback loop and it gets back to them and, you know, they get, they build products that they get to sell. Okay. We get products that we want to buy <laughs> and that feedback loop. And when they're, you know, appreciative because they know, I mean, I'm not, I have nothing personal against keyboards. If there's, there's an issue with it, I'll, I'll, I'll state it. But anyway. Not to get into the weeds, this is a lovely one. Um, they've got this one, I believe, in three different colors. I'll, I'll look it up when I do the uh, technical section. But I've got to say, um, I mean, again, the similarities, well, this one, they're a little bit different. I actually do like the lines on this one. I do like that inner bevel or edge or whatever they, they call it, that chamfer, perhaps. I, I'm not good with my design language, but they're basically the same width. Though this one definitely, because of the weight, definitely has a little bit more weight than this one. But it's not like this one feels like, you know, it's made out of plastic or anything. Nothing like that. It's just lighter. Um, but we have one with the screen. So uh, to me, this one really does remind me of the SK80 uh, from uh xvx i believe see that's now I do, I'm, I'm like which company did it come from when they were both the same anyway um i i quite like this one i am a sucker for screens i know screens are more of an aesthetic but i like having the time there and i like loading up animations because i mean it it's to me it's like an artist and keycap but it's one that I get to choose and I get to change whenever I want by just downloading. I mean, I, I, it's not that hard of a process. And if you guys want me to make a video on how to do it, I guess I could do it. But I mean, I can even just take a clip of a movie, you know, take the however long that clip would be, turn it into a GIF and then size it down to where it'll fit on the screen. And I can, you know, whether it's a joke, whether it's an inspirational quote, whether it's just something that gets me going through the day, whatever. Um, it's just that little bit more that you can use to customize your keyboard. I mean, that's why we choose the switches that we like and the keycap sets we like, and maybe sometimes mix them up and create our own switches because we like customizing keyboards. They're custom mechanical keyboards. Even if you buy one off the shelf, once you change something, it's become custom, custom to you. And don't let anyone tell you any different. And then just enjoy it. I mean, sure, there's always going to be somebody that's going to be like, oh, but those switches aren't that good. Or I don't think that's good looking. Or whatever negativity, because people are always going to have negativity regardless of what you're doing. Who cares? Ignore the haters, as they say. Anyway, with the XVX K75 Pro, we've got three mode connectivity, Bluetooth 5, USB 2.4, and of course, USB-C. Um, we've got a screen, 
We've got 81 keys. We have a, I mean, this is, in my opinion, this is going to be a good um, Rogue Warrior because, I mean, <laughs> those of us who've been, you know, in, in the keyboard hobby for a little while, we've seen screens come. I mean, they've been around for probably three years, but it's the last year, year and a half where they've really just blown up you know almost every keyboard has an option for it but there's still people that i'll take out one of my keyboards with a screen and and i'll be in public and people will be like why does your keyboard have a screen on it <laughs> if it's like at a coffee shop or a diner it, it's without fail if i have one of my keyboards with a screen at least one person's going to come up to me and ask me about the screen on my keyboard and um, not for nothing, most of the times it turns into some really, really interesting and fun conversations. But um, I think it's just, it's one of the aesthetics. Yes, I, I prefer having a knob. Actually, I prefer having both. But it doesn't kill me to use F11, F12 to bring up the volume, bring it down. That's usually on most keys. That's where that's located anyway. It's usually mute, volume up, volume down. So if I'm on the road. I can deal with that. Anyway, um, this is a, uh, it, like I said, it's a, uh, the Rainy originally came with a very similar keycap set as this one. And, um, yeah, they're, they're very, very similar, except the, obviously for the screen and the fact that here we have the, um, the normal spacing well not normal spacing i've seen different spacing between this part and these parts depending on how the keyboard layout is but here we have basically a blocker almost that's a one u and then we have a blocker down here like we have here but we don't have one here so that we can get the full four key column just the specs today we are taking a look at the xvx k75 pro a 75 key CNC aluminum three mode, 75% that is available in three colors. This keyboard comes with a leaf spring gasket mounted PC plate with flex cuts on both the plate and the PCB. It is a south facing three and five pin hot swap compatible PCB that has a hi fi layer with IXPE as well as a PET layer above the PCB. It does come with high tolerance plate mounted stabilizers. It does come preloaded with double shot PBT cherry keycaps that are 1.4 millimeters in thickness. It is also loaded with XVX medium purple linear with switches. The battery in this keyboard has a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity and comes weighing in at 1,300 88 grams fully loaded. The chin of this keyboard sits 22 millimeters while the back sits at 35 millimeters providing for an angle of typing of 9 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is for $99.99 on XVX's website. Links below. Alright, so for the software, I just searched for XVX channel and K75 Pro took me straight to the product page and for software the first thing though I saw was for Windows systems and for Linux systems and it was a document I'm like no that's not the driver so I had to scroll down just a little bit and I found the download for the K75 Pro now they have a couple of 75s so I accidentally first scrolled past it and then I had to scroll back up to top because it was damn, it was up near the top of the list so it does come as a RAR a RAR file is just a type of compression so you can use a 7 sip and a lot of different uh, compression utilities are compatible with RAR if not you can use 7 zip it's an open source um, software that you can download and it will uncompress the file go ahead and run that once you run it, it gives you the basic options. If you want to add a link to the desktop, it goes ahead and installs it. Then it gives you the option by default is checked to launch the software. 
once the software is loaded, you see that you do have already three different configuration spots and you can add more. But we do have a top layer, which is your normal layer. We have a function layer. Then we have a, mom a momentary and a toggle. So by default, it's a momentary function layer, but we also have a toggle function layer. So technically, you can program it as two, and then you can have different configs. So you can have numerous configurations of a dual layer. In the settings, it does allow you to set a key response time. Um, it gives you approximate times over the different connections. And it also allows you to set how long to have sleep if you want to enable sleep at all. Your macro manager is fairly basic. It does allow you to create macros and use different keys, including mouse keys. And now you can select from different predefined light back colors, um, light back lighting effects with the RGBs, but you can also create your own pre-programmed or per key RGB LED and save it. So you're able to create as many as you'd like and save them for later recall. As for the screen utility, um, this is the second one that I've seen that actually has the ability for you to download the default one because there never does seem to be, even if you reset the keyboard, it. Uh, I haven't seen too many, I haven't seen any actually that from the keyboard will allow you to actually go back to whatever image it came with default as a demonstration or as a default, you know, uh, animation on there. So this one actually does allow you to save. So I did that. I saved the default animation. Then I went ahead and imported a GIF. It did take a little while for a bigger one. I went ahead and selected another one and then uploaded that one and it uploaded just fine to the keyboard. So it does have several slots that you can upload your image or your GIF to the keyboard. You can store quite a few of them, it seems, on the software itself. Um, does allow you to preview it. Also does have a time sync button. It syncs the time and the date on the keyboard. All right, so despite the keyboard having the time sync functionality, it does not seem to have a um, any place to show the time. And I mean, you can scroll backwards or forwards through it, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Let me try and plug in it. Oh, it is on, so let me turn it off. Plug it back in. There's nowhere for the time. So I'm going to reach out to XVX and see if that's something that uh, they'd be able to do, perhaps in a firmware update to include the time and the date, because that's just something that a lot of us that do have screens, I know, enjoy. I mean, I'm constantly about the time, the date, how much time I have left, how much time I've spent. It's just, you know, time is one of those resources that you just can't buy. So, it, and it's not limitless. So it's one thing to keep track of. And some of us that are, might be a little, little OCD or ADHD or a little bit of both, um, having that time information is very important. Otherwise, I'm really digging this keyboard. I do like the screen. They're thoughtful in how that they, they put it. Now I've gone ahead and um, I've cut almost to size. I'm not a very good, um, <laughs> my eyesight is just not what it used to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, screen protector that they have. I'm gonna go ahead and start the removal of this one to avoid trying to get any dirt or dust underneath it um, by just replacing it as quickly as I can. All right, this one is starting to come off protector on there just to make sure it doesn't get damaged so old screen protectors can come in handy if you've got one or if you've got some like i've got uh practically I, I don't throw them away so that's what i use them for um at least they found a second life now Anyway, I really enjoy this keyboard. I think it's um, so far one of my, um, 
I would say it's 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 up there in as far as being favorites. I don't want to really pick any favorites yet, as I still have a couple to go through before I make the video that compares all the 75% and takes everything in consideration: shipping time, price, if it's fully pre-built, if it uh, is bare bone, if it has a screen, if it only has two keys there, um, all those things, and trying to compare it apple to apples, apples try to compare them apples to apples as much as possible so that everyone can have it as good of an idea um, you know beforehand so you can make a smart uh, decision one that's you know as fully informed as possible before you decide to if you decide to purchase one of these 75 percents that are just popping up everywhere and they all are just they're, they're nice keyboards and they all have different things to offer. So that's what we're going to go over. But so today I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a stock sound test of the K75 Pro from XVX. Um, it's a lovely 75%. Um, it comes in uh, three different colors, the white, this baby blue and a bay or grayish. It's like a bay grayish. Gray. It's a <laughs> It's a beige gray so they called it grage um, but the baby blue does have one that has the wave on it through PB, pbt die subcaps and that one looks very nice as well so um, they do have a few selections and it is in stock and available for 109.99 and, and it is in stock and available uh, today both on xpx and i believe on amazon as well uh, but i'll put the links down below if you have any questions anything that you'd like for me to compare when i come back and check it against all the different 75 percent that are out there please do let me know down in the comments below i do my best to respond or at least take note of every single comment that's left otherwise i'd love to hear your thoughts about this keyboard and if you enjoyed this video a thumbs up and a subscribe really does go a long way. So I do hope that you enjoyed the video. I want to wish you an awesome day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.